uh, Justin Hines is the boy's name, and he's such an inspiration. He, he really was. He just touched my heart. I started to look him up, and he's a Canadian star, and started at, what, I think five years old. <coughs> um, he was having breathing problems. He's got Larson syndrome, and, and anyway, he was having breathing problems, so they started in, in singing a little bit. Anyway, he uh, took off like crazy, and now he's starting to be on the charts with uh, some of the big names. and. You know, his video was so inspirational. If you like him, there's a lot of other ones on there that are very inspirational. He does a lot of, um, of work there um, in Canada. So on the video, there were all these stories of courageous people. And, you know, as we were doing this talk, I was looking, and I'm sure Judy was, at all of the, these incredible stories out there of people that are just, you know, so inspirational that they overcome all odds to live this incredible life where they help people. Um, up there, there were mothers of gun violence. You saw that. I don't know, a lot of you might not have been able to read that, but there were two mothers that started a group. Um, there was gay bashing, a guy that uh, had been the victim of that. Uh, drug addicted, homeless. There was grannies on motorcycles. I, I like that one. You know, it, it's like, you know, you have the courage, and that's what we're talking about the courage to overcome anything and to step into something that your heart says yes to. You know, and that's kind of what we're talking about today. So as I was reading all of, all of these inspirational stories, the one that really stood out um, to me was a story that I had read earlier. And it was about a little boy and girl. They were brother and sister. And the little girl had a rare blood disease. And the little um, boy, the brother, who was about six, and he was asked if he would give a blood transfusion you know, to the um, little girl. And um, he had to kind of think about it, but he said he would. So they go to the hospital room, and they're, I'm, I'm kind of paraphrasing, I don't know exactly how it went down, but they were laying in their beds and giving their tra transfusions um, to the little girl, and her face started to turn pinker, and she started to look better, and he was so happy he could do that. And his face started to kind of pale. And then he looked at the doctor, and he goes, now when do I die? So the idea being that he gave, thinking he would die giving his sister the blood. And I thought, wow, you know, that's, see, we're born with that kind of courage. We are born with the courage to um, be, open our hearts and give to each other, you know. And, and our job as we move on is to cultivate that, to cultivate that courage inside that each of us really had from the beginning. You know, and so I don't want to spend the few minutes I have talking about other people. I want to talk about us, right? I want to talk about the courage that you and I have, the courage that we can cultivate, the courage that, that is in us, that we can move forward and have the best life that we can have, that, that <coughs> no matter what happens to us, that we not only survive, but we thrive with our life, no matter what. And I look at all of you, and I, I, I can just look at your little stories and... I shouldn't say little stories, they're big stories, and, and you guys are so courageous for what I've seen you go through. And so I'm speaking to the choir here when I talk about courage. And courage, I think we've talked about it a lot before, and you know that courage comes means, in French, from heart, from the heart. So courage is not a thing about having guts, but it's about having heart. It's about bringing your heart to whatever you're doing in life. Bringing it totally and completely, living deeply, and living fully, and that's that's what I want to really talk about. Each of you, think about your life and, and how is it lived on the surface or is it lived deeply? You know, is it lived deeply and fully? Are you doing everything you can so that when your last day comes, you can say, I lived my life as fully as possible, as fully as possible. I think that's that's huge. It's always been in my life. Um, Donna Mark Markova, I'm going to read a few lines of her poem because to me that says it all. I just absolutely love it. Love it. <coughs> Uh, her poem, I Will Not Die, An Unlived Life. Mm. I will not live in fear of falling or catching fire. I choose to inhabit my days, to allow my living to open me, to make me less afraid and more accessible, to loosen my heart until it becomes a wing, a torch, or a promise. I choose to risk my significance, to live so that that which comes to me as seed goes on to blossom, and that which comes to me as blossom goes on to fruit. That touches my heart, that poem. And I want to kind of take that apart a little bit, because 
it's so important that we don't watch our days go by, but that we live them. It doesn't mean we have to get out and jump out of airplanes. That's not what I'm talking about. But I'm talking about feeling whatever you are doing in the moment. Being there. Being there with your life. Being present with your life. You know, that's the, that's the most that we can do. It's having the courage to blossom. To take this gift that God gave us, this life, and do something with it. To blossom it. To love so deeply. And to risk being hurt. To risk the fear for something bigger, for something bigger than us. To be the greatest version of Tom you can be, of Denise you can be, of Bob you can be. Do you know what I'm saying? Be the greatest version of who you were put here to be. That's important. What is that? You know, that's your job to find it. And it's within each and every one of us to find that version of us and then to go out and live it, even if it's just sitting in a chair. You understand what I'm saying? It's being, being with that. If you have challenges, if you have health challenges, it's being with that and making, like he did on the video, something from that. Being God uniquely, see, uniquely. Doesn't mean that we're all the same, we all do it differently. But taking the courage to express your God qualities and giving yourself a voice. See that, and I think about this, this is really huge in my life. This kind of courage is about making choices and listening to your inner voice. It's about listening to, to who you are inside. Not your head, but really getting down to your intuition and feeling it and then moving on it. You know, uh, I, I love this. The courage to create a space for our own spirit to rise from within. This is the purpose of our journey. To find our personal truth and then give it a voice. See, it means that you are a piece of God, right? And you are manifested uniquely. So go out and do something uniquely that is yours to do because there is a special, a special purpose in your life. And what is that? What is that to do? It's about uncovering that authentic light inside of each and every one of us and being able to see it in ourselves. And when we start to see it in ourselves, we start to see it in each other. And it changes everything about us. And it takes so much courage to follow that. It takes a lot of courage to step in and give yourself a voice. And, and I'm thinking of the, the first time. I remember, actually, I, I was kind of a, um, I was a real kind of goody-goody kid, right? You know, I, I just, I was real close to my mom. She had five kids. And I was the one that, you know, kind of took care of mom. And I didn't want to do anything to hurt her, you know. And the rest of the kids just kind of... I, I think I got on their nerves, you know. I mean, I, I can see that now, you know, out of being five of us. And I was the one that, you know, had to kind of, okay, mom, okay, mom. And mom used to kind of guilt me sometimes. You know, it's like, oh, you know, someday I'm going to be dead and gone. And, uh, you know, and here, you know, you, you've got to stay home with it or you've got to do this. And I never wanted to hurt or offend her, you know. And so I remember this specific time. And she said, oh, you know, Glenda, I'm going to be dead and gone. And, you know, I'm just going to die. And usually I'd say, oh, mom, don't die. You know, I know, you know, I love you. You're not going to die for a long time. Don't worry. And I didn't this time. I said, she said, you know, Glenda, I'm going to be dead and gone. And I go, and I'm going to miss you. <laughs> <laughs> I swear to God. I, 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 it, it was like something came over me. And, 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 and it wasn't, it wasn't a... Um, Kind of a facetious thing, you know, where uh, and I'm gonna miss you, or like, and your point is, you know, that, that that wasn't like it. It was almost like I had this incredible love for my mother, but I saw her as this little girl, and then I saw me as becoming, you know, strong in my own, you know, um, my own person, kind of. And I was able to say that, you know, I was able to say to her, you know, hey, I'm gonna miss you, and she smiled at me, and she said, well, you know, you've grown up or something like that. You know, and it's like she knew it all along and I think she was waiting for me to finally step into my own power you know and it was at that time I remember my life kind of changed and I, I you know I wasn't the shy little um, violet that I kind of was in my you know first you know 18 years or whatever it was you know it's but that's what we're talking about taking the risk because that was a risk for me you know a little one you might think but it was a risk to be able to speak up to my mother you know and to be able to say that and I look back at all the things in our life, and that's what I kind of want to talk to you, is that there's these things in your life that are changers, right? They're the difficult things you go through. And there's, I had three major ones that probably shifted my life. I've had a lot of different pains, but the three were the, my divorce, it was then my husband's illness and his eventual death. And then it was when we left our spiritual community. That was a, a life changer. So think of your life. 
you know, of the major events in your life that became these um, life-altering decisions that you changed your life. So, so I was looking at, at what a painful time that was for us, right? That, uh, it doesn't sound like it would be so painful, but maybe it does if you've been in a spiritual community for a long time. And we had to leave. And um, I won't really get into it, but, but the truth is, it, somebody said that um, we constantly swallow our own voices until we choke on them. Right? Did, does that, could you guys understand that? We swallow our voices until we choke on them. And again, that was my lesson <coughs> at the other community. I had to swallow, and you did too, our voices until we finally couldn't do it any longer. And it was at that point when everything lightened and we had to choose what to do. And we chose to leave and not create any kind of, of, of harm there. Um, but what I'm thinking of is that it was hard. It was hard, especially that financially, I had no, absolutely no money at all. I was working there. Judy was a board president there. It was a, a big deal. And as um, I left, Fred was dying, he was sick. I moved in with Judy, you know, had nothing basically. And, and that's where everything just kind of started, Common Ground. So Common Ground started, see, from this, this this pain, and I have to say it was courage. It was, it was a lot of courage. It was heart decisions. It wasn't like, oh, I'm desperate now. What are we going to do? It was everything kind of came together to start common ground from that time. And I'm thinking, I thought of what Thoreau said, and I love this. It said, most men leave, lead lives in quiet desperation. And I knew I didn't want to do that. I knew I wanted a voice, and I knew that I wanted to live fully and deeply, no matter the risk it took. And it was a risk for all of us. My gosh, you know, I was thinking of wonderful Dennis. I love you. I think back, you know, Dennis, of, of um, you know, how you took me in. And um, <laughs> that wasn't easy. No, it was easy. It was easy. It was easy to take me in. It wasn't easy to take Fred in, was it? <laughs> and he was sick. Yeah, you know. So anyway, um, you know, that took courage. So everybody's courage came together. And from that, see, Common Ground started. You know, so from that, these things that touch other people's lives. And who knows, after we're gone, you know? Yes, that's true. That, that, that is true. That started. And so that's what I'm saying. No matter what is going on in your life, sometimes it's this little, little thing you give voice to. Lightens and something, your life goes in a whole different, whole different direction. You know? So there's a quote by, is it a niece, Nin? I think you know her. And it says, the day came when the risk to remain tight in a bud was more painful than the risk it took to blossom. That's, that's how it felt for us. And I'm saying to each of you in your life, if the risk to stay in that tight bud, and it can be about leaving, not just a, a, it could be a marriage, it could be a, um, just a way of being, right? It could just be leaving a way of being. Do you know? You understand what I'm saying? You know, if you if your way of being is angry all the time, maybe that's what it's about. Maybe it's about leaving that. You're taking the risk to stay, not stay in the bud, but to blossom. And and that means so much to me. See, we all have to leave something, whether it's a job, a relationship, sometimes. But it takes courage to make your life better. Sometimes, then we have to do that. And what um, Paul Tillich calls this is courage beyond courage. The courage beyond courage. And it's that which arises when all other courage fails. It's like how many times did we try to set things right? We try to make things right in this community. We, we wanted this to work. We, we felt like, I don't want to get into it too much, but, but it, was, it didn't work. It didn't work. And then courage beyond courage was our leading. And it's at that moment that your life changes. It's at that moment when all of a sudden everything lightens. See, when, when you're in true courage, you finally step into it, and it's like, ah, oh, you know it's right. You know it's right because it feels lighter inside. You don't doubt it, and it's not painful. Now, I can't say it isn't painful. It was painful, but there was a lightness to it. There was a lightness. So see, we are born with this courage. You know, every one of us are born with that courage. And it's up to us to cultivate that seed of courage within each and every one of us to develop the authentic life, this unique life that you are meant to live. 
man, we all have challenges. And, and like I said at the beginning, I've seen, I know you, most of you I know, and even those I don't know, I know that you have to have challenges too. That's what life is about. They're unique challenges, but there's something bigger than your challenges, mm -hmm. and that's the, the presence inside of you, the presence of, of whatever you want to call it, of God, divine, the presence of love is what I call it. When you have that and make that bigger than your challenge, you can't lose. You can't lose. Make your God bigger than your problem. So I'll close with a quote that, another quote from Anise Din. I love her. Life shrinks or expands in proportion to one's own courage. So sh you're going to um, expand or shrink your life. So my prayer for all of us is that we expand our life, that we step in, we take a risk, we get out of the small bud, and that we blossom, blossom our life, and that we step into the courage of who we were meant to be. Thank you.